I'm going to title this Presidential Perversion. And I'm going to tie it into another dream that I had in which a similar issue came up. But also uh, the mystery of iniquity Paul spoke about in the New Testament became the latest transgender rights battleground. On May 13th, President Obama issued a directive stating that transgender students should be allowed to use the restroom of their choosing in public schools. First of all, let me just give you the dream. I was in a, looked like a library, and there were seats assembled along the wall. Kids were sitting in the seats, and there was one large seat out front, and the president was sitting there in front of the, the children that were in the library. The president added that public schools that do not follow these guidelines would be in violation of Title IX, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in public schools. Schools who do not comply face possible legal action and loss of federal funding. He had a book in his hand, and I was asked to come out and sit beside him. I sat in a smaller type chair, and he asked me to read the book. <clears throat> he handed it to me. It was already open to a page, and in the book, it was as if it was a coloring book because the outline of animals was in the coloring book or in the book. Uh, I saw an elephant. I think I saw, I remember seeing a zebra, but or at least a horse shape. Inside each of the outlines of those animals, it was you know like you would color in the lines, was also outlines of men's genitalia. And there were words on the bottom of each, each page, and it's like I was supposed to read the words on the bottom of the page. The president said, read it. And I told him, no, I won't read it. When I said that, handing the book back, he took a deep breath as if in disgust, like, kind of like that, and squeezed my hand really hard. Now, to, to just let you know how I think and how I believe by reading the Bible, I've come to understand. Paul speaks of a mystery of iniquity. And iniquity is sin or wrongdoing, things like that. And I hope this breeze is not too loud in the microphone. Um, but Paul speaks of a mystery of iniquity. And as I continue to look at the mystery of iniquity, I could not, you know, definitely tell for sure what exactly that was but in during the course of searching it out I came to the belief or the understanding that as a person is exposed to certain things let's say for example if if I wanted to let me, let me take a dog first and, and then we'll work it into people but if I wanted to make a dog mean then I would expose him to situations to cause him to have to fight. And as a, at an early age, I could probably make the dog meaner by beginning to, to do that. Maybe they do that with training fighting dogs and things like that. But as I looked at Mystery of Iniquity, I started thinking, well, you know, that could apply to people. The earlier the age you expose a person to iniquity, the more likely they would be to be influenced by that exposure. And if you look at your television, you see, you know, we've got a, a TV series now called How to Get Away with Murder. Uh, we've got children's cartoons that show different types of iniquity, sin, things like that. Uh, all around us, there is exposure to iniquity. So to the point that even if you were trying to raise your child in a sheltered type environment, it would be practically impossible to shield them from all the things that are out there. I was wondering though, with all the pressing, I pressing issues that you have before you right now, right. why is the issue of which bathroom a person uses such an issue? Well, I, you know what, it's, it's a great question. Uh, somehow people think I made it an issue. I didn't make it an issue. There, there are a lot of things that are more pressing. You're absolutely right. Uh, what happened 
And what continues to happen is you have transgender kids in schools. And they get bullied. And they get ostracized. And it's tough for them. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, we're of a generation where that stuff was all out of sight and out of mind. And so pe people suffered silently. But now they're out in the open. And the question then is, schools are asking us, the Department of Education, for guidance. How should we deal with this? And my answer is that we should deal with this issue the same way we'd want it dealt with if it was our child. And that is to try to create an environment of some dignity and kindness for these kids. And, and, that, and that's sort of the bottom line. It, it, I have to just say what's in my heart, but I also have to look at uh, you know, what's the law. And my best interpretation of what our laws and our obligations are is that we should try to accommodate these kids so that they are not in a vulnerable situation. Now, I understand that people, you know, for religious beliefs or just general discomfort might disagree. And I'm not the one who's making a big issue of it. But if, if the school districts around the country ask me, what do you think we should do? Then what we're going to do is tell them, let's find a way to accommodate them in a way that makes sure that uh, these kids are not, you know, excluded and ostracized. As I continue to look at this, I, I acknowledge that, you know, it's a mystery. And the Bible states it's a mystery specifically because it's something that is hidden or, you know, not able to find. And I'm not claiming that I have found the mystery of iniquity. But I can tell you that, you know, God also said, I will visit the iniquities of the father down to the fourth generation. So I, I kind of say monkey see, monkey do. In my case, I've done some things in front of my children I would love for them not to do. But they saw me do it. So by seeing me do those things, they could have maybe picked up on some things or later in life get to the point, well, I at least want to experiment with the things I saw Dad do. And if you are honest with yourself, there may be some things that you have done that could have had an influence on your kids. So this mystery of nickery, the snowball effect, I did it, my kids did it, my kids may teach my, their kids to do it, the snowball effect could be there. So I looked at that and I'm like, well, why would he want me to read the book in the first place? Why would the men's gelatilia be in the picture? And why would it be, why would the audience be children? And, you know, I, I call it a, a perversion, a, you know, not only just a perversion, like in the president may be perverse, but also it is to perverse other people. So. Those, those thoughts were on my mind after I woke up from the dream, after I looked into the mystery of iniquity. And I'm going to tell you something. I grew up in a naive world. I grew up being taught by naive people. I grew up not knowing the, the actual state of a world. But, you know, the Bible speaks of wheat and tares. They also, if you go all the way back into the New Testament, you can get back to Cain and Abel. You know there's a line in the Bible, the King James Version, which I recommend. It states, Cain went out of the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> Later, another son was born. It never states that about the other son. But Cain did. And then there was the ways of Cain, or the, how Cain went about his business. He, he built a city. He named it after his son. You know, that's the maybe the first, what you would call, metropolis, or place where you could actually bring people in, have them pay taxes, have them give diligence to the government, the tyrant, or whatever. And as you look down through the history of civilization, you can actually see that develop all over the place. Now, some people say, I live in the most free country in the world, and even in that country, you're not free. You still have to pay your taxes. You still have to, you know, look presentable, do things such as that. 
what I'm saying is, is that if the if the ways of Cain out of the presence of the Lord have existed throughout all of eternity, all of century, then these guys have developed crafty ways of influencing civilization. And you're seeing the climax of it right now in your own world. To where they know how to they know how to turn black people against white people. They know how to turn white people against black people. So much and so crafty that they each opposing force thinks they are legitimate in their argument. When in fact it's more like a puppeteer pulling the strings causing the influence. Those things are happening everywhere. So <clears throat> from the dream about the presidential perversion, trying to get kids turned on to, you know, perversion, uh, to things being pumped through your television set, it's all working in harmony and unison to deceive the nations and to bring about a one world government. So I wanted to share that. Uh, I wanted to tell this with another dream. Just so you'll know, my thoughts, not my conclusion, nor has God spoke to me. But I want you to remember back that I aggravated the president. He took a deep breath, ex exhaled, and then squeezed my hand hard, finger or hand, something like that. In another dream, someone came up to the back of me and squeezed my deltoid muscle right here. So hard, it almost paralyzed me. It was like, oh my gosh. And then as they squeezed my deltoid muscle, I heard the words Antichrist. Now, I'm not connecting anything to anything other than I can say in two dreams, I have been squeezed. One of them, I heard Antichrist. The other one, I knew it to be the current president of the United States, Obama. But I'm not saying that is the case. I'm just saying what I've seen. So thank you all very much. Be watchful for the mystery of iniquity. Your children have no clue what's going on. Um, you possibly have no clue what's going on, and you very well may think that you're so smart that the, the very words that are coming out of Byron's mouth are stupid. But whatever the case, realize the woman that rides the beast, the beast system, is influencing your life daily and you may be so smart you don't recognize it so thank you